bilingual. <laughs> All right, well, good evening. Thank you for joining us. Um, it is with great pleasure that I get to introduce tonight the founder and co-director of Belladonna Series. Founded in 1999, Belladonna Series aimed to form a collective of feminist avant-garde writing, promoting the work of, as their mission states, experimental, strong, multi-form, multicultural, multi-gendered, impossible to define, but delicious to talk about, unpredictable and dangerous with language women, and has featured over 300 writers of diverse backgrounds and liter literary genres. She is the author of various packets of poetry, The Story of My Accident is Ours, Under the Sun, and of course, Neighbor. Neighbor is not a book to be read sitting down. <coughs> Neighbor, <is a> to <laughs> Neighbor is a book that makes you need to explore the city and architecture around you. It provides direction and closeness. It makes you feel all the spaces surrounding us. She writes, and so there is neighbor, and then there is my neighbor. This line echoes through the levels of my own mind since I finished the book for, I didn't expect that by the end of it, I would think that every or any single person standing next to, in front of, or behind me could possibly be my own neighbor. <laughs> for, home, for home is us, you and I, in our own skin, and it hurts to see how thy neighbor, or the state could possibly harm that we are. Sitting next to Rachel and listening to her talk is like having coffee with your smartest and dearest friend. You never really want her to suck. But what really made my little poetic heart flutter with happiness was the subtle passion for the work she describes as small failures in her writing. And that regardless of this fact, she so ardently added to neighbor, regardless, because we both know that they aren't failures, not even close, not even at all. I hope you enjoy her reading as much as I have and that you get to passionately come across all the levels in your own mind. <laughs> Belladonna Series is belladonnaseries.org if you want to check it out. And there's a Facebook page. And if you go to belladonnaseries.org, you can sign up and get emails. And there is a reading at a name. Is anybody live in Brooklyn? <laughs> okay, great. There's a great reading, I think it's October 19th, um, with Ariel Goldberg and Aldrin Valdez and um, another person I'm forgetting, but anyway, I, I didn't organize it, so um, we're, we are a big collaborative, Lila is part of it uh, for many, many years, really since the beginning of the collaborative, right? And. Um, we became a collaborative officially in 2009, 2010. Before that, it was more of a project. And um, there is a, a party. You could, if you want, you can give me your name that we're having for people who are interested in being more connected to it in Brooklyn on October 22nd. So let me know if you want to save the date invitation for that party. Okay, that. Um, mm -hmm. I just want to say also that Natasha has worked very hard on this first poem that we're, like, I think she did her, her own translation of it more or less for this first poem that we're going to read. And so she'll, uh, she'll start and then I'll continue and we'll sort of flow back and forth. Are we didn't tell, so are we just going to do this one poem and then, okay. Piso 03-04-19, Vecino. Vecino es una larga página sobre el vecino. ¿Por qué se llama confesión o si se llama mi vecino o okay? qué? En todo caso, soy. Tengo ideas. Al momento que tipeo esto, ya lo he trabajado por un año. Los últimos seis meses completamente en mi cabeza, donde hay muchos niveles. El problema es si están conectados o si son niveles del todo. Un nivel puede connotar una pieza en una estructura unificada o una unión de partes inconexas, albergadas firmemente. ¿A qué? ¿El Estado o yo? ¿O si yo soy el Estado? Soy una colección de deseo, alojado precariamente. Entonces allí está vecino y luego mi vecino. En el libro llamado Es mi vecino, Yo soy el objeto de la relación en la que estoy y por la que tomo distancia entre paredes y o niveles. 
La distancia es dominio. La comparto con el yo, de yo, que yo reconozco cuando confieso, tomo esta distancia. Casi escribo desapego, pero no es desapego. Desapego es aquello que ejerzo cuando no soy consciente del yo, del yo que soy consciente. El desapego es eso que hago cuando amo. El amor es algo más complicado cuando hablo sobre mi vecino, que sabe que lo he rechazado varias veces, con quien recién he sido inexplicablemente amable. El amor es algo complicado cuando hablo de mi vecina, loca, aunque entregada a la lógica de la vida, al ser hoy una buena madre. ¿Por qué digo entonces que está loca cuando loco es el nombre que se usa para aquel que se rehúsa? But I love my neighbor. I am sure I love the closeness, mediated, distance, we collaborate, corroborate. I wrote distance, not detachment, we never attach, to begin. Already I am telling you about the neighbor, who today asked, where was I going? Sly look in his eye, which naughtiness are you tonight? Stairwell hall window, 030510, sacrifice. It matters this disaster began with an idea. I am thinking about the secular. Yes, I sex my neighbor. E.g. curiosity engaged, not now slaughtering each other, not face to face. When she enters my apartment, she steals from me. I report her to the police. Neither the police nor I care much to catch. Neither the police nor I want her to go to jail. What we care about, what we don't know, what we don't know, what we build between, muscular shoulder, lift in the window, lit, yellow, our hours differ. We want more from each other. We can't stand to not have what the other one has. We can't stand what the other one has. We can't stand the action of light, of waking. We are scared we could reach through shaft, let touch the tips, finger and flank, instead sacrifice live things down, thrown hard into alley, prayer valley, paper valley. He could be me so rapidly, I sacrifice another. They are small, they are bugs. It is too easy to write. And this is the second neighbor poem. Border, corner. 030509. Neighbor, before I get distracted, I am easily distracted. I will try to speak explicitly on this project for at this moment there is a need to write directly into political context. I am in the United States, which calls itself America. United Statesians known as Americans and Canadians, Canadians, Mexicans. Mexicans. I must write directly on this page. I want to say speak, but I am writing as a United Statesian. As a writer, it's more appealing to treat myself as object than subject. Which really leads to the, the next part of my reading where I kind of trouble that again. I was talking about it yesterday. As subject, the project is memoir or book of reflections. Either is dull. I've decided to use my obsession with my neighbor as the context for a discussion of the state. I confess, this isn't the only thing I want. Amanecer. Extraño al desgraciado de mi vecino. Ese que viene entrada la noche habla fuerte por teléfono. Eso cuando no está roncando. Pero ahora estaba callado, así que me dormí de puro cansancio. Es mi intención decir que no me he drogado en exceso, de modo que esta mañana me merezco un vaso de vino. 
pero lo pospongo por el trabajo, tengo un trabajo. Esto lo enfurece, el vestido, mi pretensión, me oye, cree que soy yo la del ruido. Igual que ella mirando tras ella para cerciorarse de quien escucha esta historia, porque en ella hay porque hay coño y verga en la historia de la niña que usaba la verga más competente, aunque tal vez esa era mi otra conversación, igualmente ruidosa. Esta eh, tiene el título de Imágenes fijas. Las imágenes se vuelven fijas. Cuando las grabé, lo fueran o no. Aquí no estoy discutiendo la vida en el sueño. Tiene poco que ver con el vecino, menos cuando incorporo sonido y despertar. Él se mantiene milagrosamente, recostado en mi cama en su luz amarillenta. Abro un poco las persianas. Las películas me han hecho esto. Las películas están cada vez más quietas. Las imágenes fijas no capturan lo que digo cuando hablo de semejanza. El hombre que está sentado en un depósito de trenes vacíos bajo un paso elevado. Dos nubes hechas por hombres que las hicieron emerger envolutas en forma de V al sol de la pantalla. Pensé que quizá, pensar que quizá la guerra ha comenzado. En ese punto su chaleco amarillo y sus pantalones de jean. Un hombre oscuro y mediano cuyas piernas embutidas en la mezclilla delinean una V invertida sobre una carretera o una vía. Hace juego con la inmanencia de una nueva guerra, imagen fija. Mientras el tren se mueve, su encogimiento es una clase de movimiento. Aunque mientras se reduce, tanto él como su posición se vuelven enormes. Recordar algo porque nada se ha movido. So, um, I'll end neighbor um, with the poem called Defining at the end. I know we talked about it a little bit yesterday. Um, takes a little bit of time. Room, bedroom, 031124. Defining. As a United States scene, and I'm sorry to draw myself again, but it also sort of gets to the prose um, poetry problem pretty directly. Um, as a United States scene, I do not think that neighbors in other nations treat each other better or with more care, but I would rather my roommate were from another country. In this country, it is not the norm to kill neighbors because they have a different religion. Group killing may be a form of intimacy we lack. The poets are not my neighbors and they are not my friends. We agree that our religion, if we have one, is inconsequential to our relationship and to our poetry here in this country. Poets are responding well to the project I have of thee, my neighbor. They wonder if I am speaking of my actual experience and are titillated by the possibility that this fucking I've spoken of and drugs are drugs and fucking not writing. My neighbor has made a public stand of his sobriety and his fetish, his daughter who he keeps infantile. It is enough to make anyone squirm. Speaking of squirm, tonight I had a plan to do coke, then come home and write about the neighbor. Is it richer with windows open and summer rage audible? Today the customer at the food pantry across the street excoriates the lousy church that feeds her. The lapse born again blames the hypocrisy of her church. I was hoping for a loss of faith in God. The story, a story is told about a loud and bothersome neighbor who explained to the complaining neighbor her predicament. You're my neighbor, you have to help me. We laugh at this story. We agree that isn't the way we think of things. Some mornings I wonder if my reluctance to leave the building is enough reason to ask my neighbor for cream or an egg to make the pancakes. Language would be easier if we could remove the prepositions but then the objects and subjects would be difficult to discern. Like I said, in my career as a writer, I know it's suspect for poets to speak of career. I find myself more attractive as an object. If I am the object, then who is the subject? Unnecessary. Unnecessary is happy because she is both nothing and everything. She is as light as air, if air be light. Anyone wants meaning. Anyone calls meaning necessary. Unnecessary has intercourse with anyone. 
and unnecessary puts herself into a position where she can't lose. Loss, regretting her lack of an E, loses unnecessary. Loose feels muscular and achy. No, loose is on quaaludes. Loose can't explain why loss gets laid more, nor the draw of religion. The grown ones who never believed in God are assimilated aliens on the street and trains. Sad ones whose sadness may get read as intelligence. Intelligence likes to fuck, but gets laid less than belief. Never mind the librarian. Librarians appreciate quiet refrigerators. Librarians have fucked both belief and intelligence, poorly, but a lot. A lot gets mistaken for belief. God-fearing, paganism, atheism, and monotheism, masochism, ism, is at war with unnecessary. Ism means motherfucker. Ism is one mean motherfucker everyone wants to fuck. Reading her is meaning. Meaning delights in masochism. Ism is a sadist who doesn't mind lovers calling to her meaning while fucking. Fucking is the sneakiest fuck of all. Fucking convinces anyone she's meaning. Unnecessary puts up with fucking because she understands fucking to be without malice. Even cold-hearted loves doing it without malice. Fucking is inclusive, opposite from ism. Meanwhile, despite occasional excesses with fucking, downtrodden rages. Without the rage of downtrodden, any neighborhood becomes suburb. In suburb, any human is a living subject to the project, great experiment, cataloged by librarian into food, medicine, style. The project of secular society is no longer an issue because as United Statesian, we don't often kill our neighbors for their religion. <laughs> Thank you so much, Natasha. That was beautiful. I realized that um, one of my beliefs, from my own writing at least, is that one book uh, spills over into the next. Like there's a, like a remainder or, or, or an excess, and um, so the the pieces. The, what I'm writing now, in some ways, starts with this kind of. Um, thing I published in here, which I'll talk about, which uh, refers to this book. So I'll just read one little short piece in this book called The Story of My Accident is Ours, because I'm talking about the accident in the next piece. Which is short. Accident. The sun is out in the morning after night of listening to rain hitting the roof above. It doesn't matter. Every scene of the accident must be recalled over and over again, ad infinitum, because its revelations are slow and endless, each one leading to less thinking than the one before. Not thinking does nothing and makes for no difference in the story, which begins with thinking correctly and acting exactly the same as if our actions had been innocent. Coda. And this is this book called The Felt that is definitely a magazine that this group is looking for online submissions of translations of the MFA in writing in Pratt, so I want to make it. Coda, Remnants of the Accident. And this, they, they solicited stuff on writing activism, and this is what I came up with. On my mat, in an accidental yoga class, just after the accident I'd been in, but which didn't happen to me, I kept smelling something I could only identify as blood. As it, the real accident, not the accidental yoga class, was happening, I was responding to it as it was happening, somehow knowing, and this was irritating, that later I'd be writing something. I'd written a book on the accident, although I never knew exactly which accident that book is about. One accident in the book that is on purpose is mistaking verb tense, making it incorrect, moving from present to past, arguing with the notion that they are separate. Not knowing which accident I was writing about meant that I had to go back to it and back to it, looking for it. It took such a long time. I was proud of this book, certain observations it made that I made in it, and the ones that came in the wake after it was out of my hands. Maybe that's a definition of writing books or making books. They go out of the hand that makes them just as they were, are put in. 
that we walk into the accident knowing it will happen. Later, we all claim responsibility. There were several onlookers waiting for the police, waiting to tell our part to involve ourselves, although each of our stories was, if not exactly, then nearly exactly the same. In language and in affect, we competed to tell our own rushed to give the police our names, phone numbers, and addresses, complete with apartment numbers. I'd noted this tendency years before. There was a fire at the college. Each person I spoke to imagined that somehow it was their fault, a light they hadn't switched off, a cap not screwed tightly enough onto the tube of paint, a bottle of thinner not having complained about the wiring, the faulty sprinklers not loudly enough, persistently enough, food left overnight for the mice. The story of my accident is ours had just come out. I joked that I'd been wrong, that actually it's the story of our accident is mine. <laughs> Us all finding ourselves personally to blame. I thought about that a lot and got nowhere very far and went back to my happier thoughts that we move toward sharing that communism is in us. What remains in me from the scene of the accident I was in, but which didn't happen to me, I was on the street corner, I followed every movement, and when it happened, I was ready for the scream, was already there for holding the woman, her blood is on my arm. I did nothing but hold her then, soft and still like that, a certain way of holding, as of a child or a lover, my lover. I didn't think about it. There is a feeling I have when I am not thinking. It is where things come from, called by Nicole Brossard, inspiration, glissant, relation, agamben, the open. I picked up Jennifer's copy of Kafka's aphorisms. Her new lover had given it to her, the lover that surprises, the one that might work well now that she'd given up on love. In a dynamic world, truth shifts. Quote, sexual love deceives us as to heavenly love. Were it alone, it would not be able to do so, but containing within itself, unknowingly, a germ of heavenly love, it can. I am bucking certain kinds of writing, locking myself out of the houses that have had me, my past impulses in writing, the kinds of writing I like to read, in order to move toward the urgency of the moment, which is remembering and telling, which is menopause, my menopause. Feels like something urgent. Feels about me, but not only about me. I think it was Isabella who said that about neighbor, right? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. But that's kind of what I was going to um, But not only about me. Feels like we live in menopausal times. <laughs> Raw and hurt. All historical trauma right upon the surface of our skin. For now, I move away from the purely structural work, untraceable association, sometimes fancy or fanciful, deep abstraction, long sentences, the work of making sense of the wide world, and move into the work of making sense of myself, to myself and maybe to others. It is excruciating to speak of myself this way, elevating moments of intimacy, of relation, of inspiration. It is tender, but beyond tender, it is tender in the face of some other great force against me, against us, that says, go, don't stay. That every gesture of staying will hurt another. I wonder about that moment, the jogger running into a motorcycle. Did she need contact? That crazy dance of not stopping before encounter, a wrapping embrace? The truth of the matter shifts. In time and in encounter, in folds, unfolding the moment when everyone can stop, but goes, this the accident goes on, is seen ahead. Had they both stopped, the encounter would have been avoided. They would have never touched each other. I would not be writing this trying to account for our touch. For 32 years, I've held close a Judy Grand long poem called A Woman is Talking to Death. It keeps coming up in the menopausal poems, in the collaboration with Susan B. and in my whatever sex memoir. Here is some piece of it. I am, a, this is Judy I am a pervert, therefore I've learned to keep my hands to myself in public. But I was so drunk that night, I actually did something loving. I took her in my arms, this woman, until she could breathe right. And my friends who are perverts too, they touched her too. We all touched her. You're going to be all right, we lied. She started to cry. 
I'm 55 years old, she said, and that said everything. Back to the poem. I've always felt indicted by this long poem, by the scenes of not loving the other enough in the moment of their need, not enough to starve death, but in the moment of the accident I was in but didn't happen to me, in which I held someone like I'd hold a lover, and she was held by me, I knew something more about starving death. One cannot do it alone. So these, uh, I'll read a couple of poems from the, this whatever sex memoir that I referred to in that. It was like sort of like an Ars Poetica or Poetic Statement. That's also a poem I, I realized um, of all the things that I'm thinking about doing now. It was like an in between time that I wrote that. Um, and the, I just want to say something about the idea behind these poems. And I hope they continue because I kind of like them because they have energy, but um, I, I don't know if they will. Um, the idea was that I would collect, that I would not write a, a chronological memoir, but I would write a memoir that um, highlighted like moments where somebody said something to me that made me know what I was in the world, like having this like sense of not, how do you like know in a kind of a, a context of um, alienation, like what, what you are, and uh, I, I have no memory, I had always had no memory, or no very much, not very much memory. So, um, so yeah, so, how, so these things that people say to you in a way define you. That was kind of the idea behind it. And at first it was called Space for Appearance, but then I was talking to a psychoanalyst who uh, said to me this quote that she thinks is from Edith Jacobson, and I, I stole it, and she said, the, psych the psychoanalyst is the mother of separation, and I just thought, mother of separation, that's it. Okay, divines. Lack of cognition has been dangerous <laughs> Well, morning. All trauma up front. Asked Brent if he were having another baby. He turned green. The strip had just announced conception, fear, loss in the having of a child. Asked one jokishly amid adorable Antony and his Johnsons and in front of her high-style red lipstick lover about her affair with one of the Anselms. Shames ever the lesson, both there and lost, quote, English used to be my second language, end quote. I didn't text her back. She's cute, though. Asked if I were a witch. Maybe, maybe not. It's not coincidence, but attention. We or one or I can see more with the I than we or one or I know, or say we or one or I know, or say we know. Now, I do see, guiltily. There are things I can't do because of something I borrowed and broke. No filter. I've none against what said to me, Max said, sleep with her. Sex difference feminist. I repeat, sex difference feminist, as though it keeps meaning something. Maybe it does. The jury, not yet out. Repetition. I am loath to it. It, it, it. Three times you're mad. <laughs> Anything you say about right, about it right till wrong. Okay, Cupid, tell me nearby stories about your addiction girlfriend. Mine usually addicted too. Young, too, practically a minor, mostly free, feels bad about the sex work, is here showing me how to MDMA, Molly, Amy. Prince says, there's joy in repetition, and me, Steinian, insistence on my own impatience. Once you know you do it, and it's annoying, please stop. So much fixation, no line outside, here's one. Teetotaling, anxious, yoga twice a day, can't make an autonomous, yes, it's supposed to be an autoamorous, but then I mean, autoamorous, yes, gesture toward me, and he fears to leave the house because before pages read, fears to leave the house because too much out there, fear to invite me, fear of a small town and favoring a small city, 60 million refugees drowning, sex difference comes back to mind from across several oceans, that disgusting defense against sex difference, defiantly opposing my sweetness on her button-down shirt, cropped hair and face, how much I like, why I picked her to begin with, angry back, not butch, a woman, and for proof, I like to wear many skirts. 
may as well have put lipstick on for having said it, who am I writing for? Who won't get this telling when telling lesbian desire? But maybe more <coughs> transcendent how anyone's confusion, concern about what makes a woman a woman, fear of prosthesis, flux desire in front of us. I slept with sex difference anyway. Suggestible. Violette, the Duke. So they all, <coughs> I'll go back here. Um, they all end with like a cultural reference. means, what if I can only, is it, is the sound, should I step back? How does this work? Yeah, is it good now? It's good, but it's when you, when you go back and you, you want to get a close How's that? Is that good? Okay. Yeah. Means, what if I can only write through these stories of love, where isn't it defined by endlessness, like communism, or wait, end, like communism? Uh, thank you. Okay. Uh, and like communism, okay, I'll start again. Means, what if I can only write through these stories of love? For isn't it defined by endlessness, like communism? Or wait, end, like communism. It holds it together. I tell her she is good at it. I don't say what it means. The pain, the pain, I, we moves toward ending me endlessly. I, we may get something right this time, already added or added back to the music listening closely to them as it changes. Lost it today. Could have been that crazy quote unquote medication. It over the counter drives me, us out from one container exceedingly extre exceeding extremity into another. My, our body, bodies wild with the weary weather. Asking pharmacist in fantasy of safe play, forgetful gesturing, innocence, pharmacist, are all drug addicts, it is like asking the cop for directions, obedient keystone. That's a cultural reference, I'm just gonna say. Keystone cops is like the like the physical comedy things that make fun of police. They're like keystone cops, they can't get anything right. Uh, for directions, obedient, keystone, suburban, hostile, male, more or less, trying to contain with brutality that which exceeds their capacity for thinking. I don't know what they think, only how they act. Dominic and Eugene, which is a movie. One more. David, my, our older brothers, pharmacist assistants of the future written already. Yeah, just a look, a crazy look. He says he's only kidding, hitting and breaking little things. Like children, like feelings, they say only kidding when they say police involved homicide or it looked like a gun, a Kai girlie's body, it harder even to say the name Tamir Rice, a plain 12 year old boy child daydreams the rise of oceans rising. to a couple of writing projects in that long piece, and one of them was the collaboration with Susan B., who is a visual artist, um, and uh, we started a collaboration a couple of years ago, and we keep <coughs> moving into it, it changes, but it, it also relates very much to the life cycle and the kind of uh, lineages of women and menopause and birth and death, and so it, and it also has this kind of broken line, but speaky kind of tone that I can read. <coughs> Robertson is sleeping in the other room. The poet so-and-so, like the actor or the magician so-and-so, I must have heard people say it's a poet, just like I see a movie in which the doctor has a huge birthmark to then understand all doctors are scarred, including mine. Steve Dillon, who has scoliosis, and one, and this one, there's another one that I'm referring to, this one, clearly drug-addled, 
but promising good advice from a poster at a bus stop on Washington Avenue. Suggestible means I am breaking my rule. I have jet lag and diarrhea. I need to prepare for a class. I read something about two or three things. It made me want to see it again. It refers to a movie called Two or Three Things I Know for Sure. It made me want to see it again, but I have an ambivalent relationship to thinking about deep meaning and the specifics of popular culture. I put the drawing on the wall where I look at it before I go to sleep. I didn't do this on purpose or for the purpose of collaboration. I did it for convenience. It was convenient for a reason different from its proximity to sleep and dream and writing. But I have to go now to prepare for a class. Hopefully return not very distant like that. March 26, 2014. This morning was rough. It has taken me a while. I find myself reaching for someone not there and not not there. And remember the island, which is funny. She was speaking about an island. I did not know how much the island is the metaphor. Is it a metaphor? We could switch names. On her island is a little house, a little god box that fits her and only her. Whatever. I mean, to the other image. Whatever. Yeah. On her island is a little house, a little god box. Here, a little house. A little god box that fits her and only her. My box is golden too. I will her to reach for my golden box and please never to arrive at its door. I work. March 27, 2014. But what do you love about it? To do something I cannot. April 1st, 2014, 7.50 a.m. It's better in the dark, I'm okay. Uh, How we like it better? Is okay, great. Um, April 1st, 2014, 7.50 a.m. On the computer, I'm supposed to be arranging taxes. Texts, geese fly above me, honking. The last was a quote from Judy Gron. Goose. Flint, less than seconds, sunlight in the window. Yumna gets it right, it is now early, the light is at 6 a.m. April 2nd, 2014. Is it lonely on the island? Is that why you look out and not in? Do you feel less confident and more afraid? Are you very sleepy there? Do you dream? David, David, not David Boog or Boog as a program. Arranging us when on Treasure Island to be ordered for looking in. Is the girl a tourist? Can she be a poet? A traveling question. I was asked what I mean by program. If it has something to do with architecture. Perhaps by program I mean the plot of a strategy rather than the plot of a story. I have come here to forget about story. To trail off in the middle of a thing I've long stopped caring about. I wonder why we haven't all stopped caring about it. It's so very trite, trite and controlling of others. It never goes anywhere, falling short of its own revolutions. It never lets anyone go anywhere. Never, lets never go anywhere. I keep forgetting all my island stories. There are so many island stories. April 3rd, 2014, island story. My biological family may provide ample evidence for a theory of destruction, but a family will never theorize its decomposition. Does this make rising from ash heap like death camp one in three survive? How long can one live on an island? I am master. I know how to tie my shoes. The consequences, they escape me, like the cat, like the squirrel, rabbit, escape the cat. Mother vehemently doubts the medicine will help. April 5th, 2014. My tree twisted, torn, alive, from underneath the window on the ceiling, I catch that hawk flying above me. That is lucky, a sign I thought for to write the island poem. I didn't call mother. Do mothers ever know I will sing to them that I can't be in a rage about it? What is the it? He is writing about freedom now. 
I am sort of an asshole dreamer. In my dreams, men pack nothing more than prosthesis for my pleasure. The writer yesterday said writing is for the pleasure of the reader. Writers are prosthesis in this case. I almost hated this notion, yet had nothing to say against it. He told about an argument in philosophy between pleasure, Foucault, and desire, Deleuze. I tried to track down that argument in text form so that I could understand it. One mustn't forget the dark forces. I may not forget the dark forces interrupted temporarily in life. Thank you so much. Oliver.